Hello. In this presentation, we will be discussing Majorana bound states and why they are extremely relevant to the field of quantum computing. From particle physics, we know that every subatomic particle has a counterpart, an antiparticle with the same mass but opposite properties such as charge and magnetic moment. Fermions are spin one half particle. And an example of an antiparticle are the electron and positron, which are known as Dirac fermions. Ettore Majorana proposed in 1937 that there must be a special case where particles behave as their own antiparticle. These Majorana fermions must have neutral charge and obey real value fields. As of yet, no fundamental particle have been found to behave as Majorana fermions, but Ettore himself believed neutrinos to be a possible candidate. Even today, neutrinos have not been resolved to be the Rack fermions or Majorana fermions. But from condensed matter physics, we have found quasi-particles which behave collectively as Majorana fermions. The similarities between the Dirac fermions and Majorana fermions can be seen by the Dirac equation and Majorana equation here. We can think of Majorana fermions in terms of ordinary creation and annihilation operators. The creation operator is represented here by a field state or an electron, and the annihilation operator is represented by an empty state or the hole. The Majorana states are equal to position of these creation and annihilation operators and are represented by these half-filled states. For Majorana fermions, these states are equal to their own conjugate, as we see by this equation here. Now, it is important to note that these are not excitons. Excitons are bound states of electrons and holes, while Majorana fermions are equal superpositions of electrons and holes. Majorana fermions always come in pairs and they are distinguishable. Due to the opposite charge of electron and holes, it is usually difficult to form equal superpositions. However, superconductors are a good material candidate to find Majorana fermions because of Cooper pairs, which were discovered in 1956. Cooper pairs, which are formed from two electrons, can combine with a hole to leave behind an excess electron. Due to the nature of superconductors, the distinction between hole and electron is blurred inside the superconductor. The particle hole symmetry is described by this equation here. And to obtain the previous identity that the creation operator is equal to the annihilation operator, this determines that the energy of these states is equal to zero. This leads to a Majorana bound state. The motivation for working with Majorana fermions in the scope of quantum computing is the possibility of topological qubits. These qubits are encoded non-locally and spatially separated, so they are insensitive to local perturbations. This leads to high coherence time, which is suitable for quantum computing because it is necessary to preserve states through evolution and measurement. How does this compare to the more popular qubits in the field, such as charge qubits and photonic qubits? Well, those types of qubits are represented here as empty and filled states. These are much more sensitive to local perturbation and leads to a lower decoherence time despite having faster computation speeds. As shown before, particle asymmetry leads to bound states. These bound states are confined to this line where E equals zero, such that they're protected from perturbations, which would take you off this line. Now, one could argue that since Majorana comes in pairs, they could deviate from this line symmetrically. However, spatial separation of these pairs allows us to treat each of them locally, such that they are each topologically protected. Another advantage of topological qubits is that because of this pairing, this leads to degenerate ground states, such that given that we tune the superconducting gap properly, this will shield the qubits from noise and thermal fluctuations. In real systems, the energy of these qubits aren't exactly zero, but they do approach it exponentially. In the year 2000, David DiVincenzo proposed the criteria for the requirements necessary for a quantum computer. The first is a scalable physical system with well-characterized qubits. We must also require the ability to initialize the state of the qubits, a universal set of quantum gates, long relevant decoherence times, much longer than gate operation times, and a qubit-specific measurement capability. Later on in this presentation, we will see how Majorana-based topological qubits satisfies these criteria. Due to zero-point motion, most systems will always have a minimum finite energy. A P-wave superconductor is necessary to cancel the zero-point motion to allow zero energy, which is necessary for Majorana bound states to form. However, no material is known to be a P-type superconductor. Here at UPenn in 2008, Fu and Kane predicted 
that Majorana bound states can be hosted at the interface of a topological insulator and an S-wave superconductor due to the proximity effect of the superconductor. Their proposed system is shown here at the interface of a topological insulator and superconductor. At this junction, the superconducting gap is locally suppressed at this vortex, allowing for Majorana bound states to form at this point. Their candidate materials for the topological insulator are shown here. This paper was a milestone in the field because it predicted that topological insulators allowed for creation, manipulation, and fusion of Majorana bound states. Experimental evidence of Majorana bound states was discovered in 2012 by Merck et al. at the Technical University of Delft in a superconductor semiconductor hybrid nanowire system. Their device consisted of an indium antimony nanowire contacting a normal gold electrode and a superconducting niobium titanium electrode. The semiconductor nanowire had strong spin orbit interactions, and they applied a strong magnetic field parallel to the nanowire, which induces Siemens splitting. The proximity effect of the S-wave superconductor pairs opposing spins in the nanowire and induces a superconducting gap. A schematic of the device can be shown here. With this being the nanowire, the spin orbit interaction is portrayed as a perpendicular magnetic field and the applied parallel magnetic field, all layered on an S-wave superconductor. An SEM image of the device is shown here, with this being the nanowire, the normal and superconducting electrodes. There is also a tunnel junction in between the electrodes. This combination of semiconductor nanowire, the layered superconductor, the spin orbit interaction, and the applied parallel magnetic field is known as a topological superconductor, and this yields Majorana bound states at opposite ends of the nanowire, indicated by the red stars. Now the question becomes, how do we detect Majorana bound states in this system? Well, this group performed a sort of conductance spectroscopy by applying a bias voltage across the tunnel barrier and measuring the conductance. The spectroscopy at an applied magnetic field of zero can be seen here where di dv corresponds to the conductance and this v is the applied bias voltage. These peaks determine the superconducting gap, represented by 2 delta. And in between this region, the electrons don't have enough energy to overcome the tunnel junction, and the conductance is proportional to the square of the tunneling probability, whereas past this peak, the conductance is linearly proportional to the tunneling probability. Since the probability is less than 1, it leads to this sort of shape. Now the group swept the magnetic field in increments of 10 millitesla, and for positive magnetic fields, a zero energy peak arose, as we can see by this shape with these peaks here. Now these zero energy peaks are due to Majorana resonance, so it is an indicator of Majorana bound states. If the superconductivity of the system was removed, or the magnetic field was removed, as in this case, these peaks were absent, as we can see here by this part essentially being flat. Topological qubits make use of Majorana bound states as non abelian ions. But what are these non abelian anions? In three dimensions, wave function bosons are symmetric under exchange, while fermions are anti symmetric under exchange. But in 2D, special particles called anions can acquire any phase angle upon exchange, with the special cases of theta equal to zero corresponding to bosons and theta equals pi corresponding to fermions. In this system, a particle exchange is called a braid and can be displayed here with these particles exchanging. For non abelian ions, multiplication is not commutative. So if we represent this operation as sigma 1, and this is sigma 2, we can see that if we perform sigma 2 first and then sigma 1, that does not equate to performing sigma 1 and then sigma 2. And we can see that simply by just following this path, and we see that particle 1 ends up in the middle, whereas in this case, particle 1 ends up at the far right. Under this system, unitary operations are carried out by this braiding. And since the unitary operations depend only on the topology, the topology of the braiding and not the actual path taken, it is insensitive to perturbations. These exchange operations move the qubit in between the generate ground states. And since these ground states are degenerate, the qubits are free from relaxation, leading to decoherence-free quantum computation. Very recently, in 2016, Osne et al. proposed a design for these topological qubits, which we can see in the top right, and we discussed this design in the, over the next few slides. Now we can see how these topological qubits satisfy DiVincenzo's criteria. 
the scalability of the system is achieved by the size of the ensemble of quasiparticles we can generate. The initialization of the system is achieved by evolving known charge states into degenerate parity eigenstates, as we've shown before. Quantum gates correspond to braiding, and this braiding is deterministic, either happens or not. Here we can see single quantum gates, such as the Z gate, the X gate, and the Hadamard gate. However, this is not a universal set of quantum gates, because it's missing the phase gate. This phase gate needs to be supplemented to the system, but it is not topologically protected, so it is a potential weakness of the system. As we've shown before, topological qubits have long decoherence times, and the measurement of the system is achieved by fusion rules or parity to charge conversion, whereas these degenerate ground states are converted to charge states and then shows differentiation in the states, which we can then readily measure through charge detection. The device geometry proposed by Austin functions off interaction-based operation. The device is shown here. The gray tube represents the semiconductor nanowire. These orange sections represent S-type superconducting islands, and the blue is a bulk superconductor. These black pins represent a set of manipulable gates that allow you to locally control electrons inside the nanowires. By applying a positive voltage at this point, we can open the gate, which then allows a parallel magnetic field to create these Majorana bound states in a similar fashion to the hybrid nanowire system we discussed earlier. We can review the functionality of topological qubits by following this protocol for the phasing time. When all three gates are closed, this double dot system is prepared in a determined charge state. By opening the gates on the end, we can initialize the qubit into the topological ground state, which is represented by this down arrow on the block sphere. We then apply a pi over 2 false, which introduces a phase shift. We allow the system to unitarily evolve for some time t, and then apply another pi over 2 false to achieve the final state of the system, which is alpha 0 plus beta 1. By then shutting all three gates once more and reading out the system in a determined charge state, we can see the probability that the system defays from the initial zero state to the one state is beta squared. We can also see how this geometry allows for braiding operations. By opening this gate, the two goes down here, which allows the three to float across. And by once more opening this gate, the two goes back here. Effectively, the two and three states have been interchanged, which is a braid. Here are some recent developments and challenges of Majorana bound states. Majorana fermions have been predicted and actually found in other hybrid superconducting systems, or even exotic systems like superfluid helium-3. A major challenge is that they have only been observed at extremely low temperatures and under high magnetic fields, which is a common issue in this field. We must also confirm that the zero energy peaks are actual evidence of Majorana bound states and not some other pseudo effect. An experimental challenge is tuning the proximity-induced superconducting gap in the hybrid nanowires. As a result of this, topological qubits have not yet been function developed. However, the future looks bright as big companies like Microsoft are working on this challenge. To be practical for quantum computing, however, these quantum particles must be generated in large numbers, and that is what some of the future work is focused on. And topological qubits are also not yet universal for quantum computation, as we discussed earlier, because of that phase gate. Here are the references I use when researching for this presentation. If you're especially interested in learning more about Majorana bound states, I recommend you check out this course by QTech Academy on edX.